my name is Minister Mark McLean, and I am the president of the New, of the New Rochelle branch of the NAACP. NAACP has fought for social justice and racial equality and inclusion in this community of New Rochelle since 1923. We are here today because our community has been plunged into crisis. A crisis that has been precipitated by a void of leadership at the Board of Education. Irresponsible hiring of Laura Fijo Fehu, a person that is engaged in a destructive reverse racism lawsuit against the Latino Chancellor of, New, of the New York City School is a vicious attack on the bedrock values of diversity and inclusion that has always been at the core of community life in New Rochelle. I am here today with the 100% support of the leader and president of the New York State Conference of the NAACP, Dr. Hazel Duke, to stand with my fellow neighbors. Neighbors who are black, white, and brown, who are parents, teachers, clergy, and community leaders, to say no to going backwards, no to cultural incompetence, no to anti-diversity, and no to Laura Fehu as superintendent of schools. We are committed to this fight, and we will win this fight. Because as Dr. Martin Luther King declared, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. No justice, no peace. No peace. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Bruce Soloway. Uh, my wife and I have lived in New Rochelle for 30 years, and our two children are graduates of the New York City, uh, of the New Rochelle Public Schools. Can you spell your name? Bruce Soloway, S-O-L-O-W-A-Y. I'm a family physician. 60 years ago, there were white people in New Rochelle who fought bitterly to stop the integration of the city schools. Those white people took their losing battle all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. Shell became known as the Little Rock of the North. In a continuation of that struggle, there are white people in New Rochelle today who are fighting to who are fighting bitterly to stop the implementation of the school district strategic roadmap, which promises diversity and cultural competence in our school's faculty and educational leadership. There are white people in New Rochelle today who have used fear mongering, intimidation, and character assassination to force out a school superintendent and numerous educational leaders of color. There are white people in New Rochelle today who applaud Laura Fehu's $90 million lawsuit against the New York City Department of Education for so-called reverse discrimination, a clear and public act of resistance to diversification of educational leadership. There are white people in New Rochelle today who say Dr. Fehu deserves a second chance or a benefit of the doubt but who actually see her as the best hope to bury the strategic roadmap once and for all. But there are also white people in New Rochelle who believe that we are one community. There are white people in New Rochelle who believe that our black and brown neighbors are entitled to exactly the same rights that we as white people usually take for granted. Access to health care, decent housing, solid employment, quality education, and fair representation in the leadership of our city and our schools and that students are entitled to teachers and educational leaders who reflect their diversity. There are white people in New Rochelle who are committed to fairness and justice, who want to live in harmony, to move forward, to build a more inclusive city, not to build higher walls and hold on to a dying past of unearned privilege. To those white people of conscience, we say Laura Fehu is not qualified to, cannot, and must not lead New Rochelle schools. Do not let a white vocal minority usurp your voice and lead us further down a road of racial conflict and division. Stand up, speak out, circulate petitions, write letters, come to meetings of the city council and the school board and make your voices heard. New Rochelle must never again become the Little Rock of the North. 
working as one community, we can stop this disastrously misguided appointment and continue to follow the roadmap together towards a fairer, more inclusive new Rochelle. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is DeQuincy Hens. I'm the pastor of Shiloh Baptist Church here in New Rochelle. New Rochelle is a city where government officials and so-called leaders of our schools hail and acclaim diversity. But we've come here today to say there is no, vert, not, no diversity without parity. There's no diversity without real efforts towards unity. There's no diversity without decisions and actions to bring our community together versus actions and decisions to rend us and tear us apart. Bringing Dr. Fehu, an individual whose actions and lawsuit cause us to have serious questions about her commitment to diversity is a mistake and a decision that we will vehemently oppose for the sake of all children in New Rochelle. The school board disregarded diversity and did not consider the community when they hired someone who claims reverse racism, a false and distorted concept. The school board disregarded diversity and did not consider the community when they violated their own policy, 8260, which, which requires community input when selecting a superintendent. The school board continues to disregard diversity and the community by hosting a meet and greet here at the high school tonight, even though opposition and concerns have been expressed by parents, significant leaders of the African-American and Hispanic communities, and by the broader community. Often this country is referred to as a melting pot, but I do not like that metaphor. We are more like a tossed salad, where every piece that makes it up is blended and tasted. For the sake of our children, we will not melt down. For the sake of future generations, we will not melt down. For the sake of this city, a better New Rochelle, we will not melt down, but we will keep standing for our children. Amen. I stand before you as a representative of the non-existent Citizens Advisory Committee. Again, non-existent Citizens Advisory Committee, which according to the BOE's own bylaws, section 8260 would provide community involvement to quote, help vet all superintendent candidates. I stand here to re represent the 1,000, yes, 1,000 people who signed the petition calling for the board to withdraw Bayho's contract or encourage her to vacate her contract. We are parents, neighbors, grandparents, we are community members, and many are not here today out of fear, because in the Latino community, many are threatened because of the presence of ICE in New Rochelle, threatening our places of work and our places of worship. But I represent those people. The Latino community will not be silenced on this issue, and I will use this platform to speak for those who could not be here. Here in New Rochelle, we can learn a thing or two from our children on the playground who all play with each other across many lines of difference. Last year, our community, Black, Latinx, and White came out to support the CELA program, a dual language program that is unique to New Rochelle and not offered in every city, a program that offers cultural competence, inclusivity, and we fought as a community to ensure that program continues. But these programs of diversity, representation are under attack. We should be proud to be immigrants and know that we will be safe in this community from harm. But we lack representation in the policy making of this city and we trusted our elected officials on the BOE. But the superintendent decision reminds many of us of the painful history of racism in this nation where over and over people of color are silenced. We are told, be quiet, give her a chance. But had we been consulted like the bylaws called for, we would yes. never be in this position today where our community is so polarized. We call on the BOE to ally with us, together with us, with the community that elected them to write this.
this wrong. Let me be clear. Our only agenda as parents is to make sure our children have school leaders that are working in the best interest of all of them, including historically marginalized groups. That's right. We believe in inclusivity and equity and know that New Rochelle needs leaders with cultural sensitivity enough to recognize what a reverse discrimination lawsuit would symbolize to our city. A slap in the face. Thank you. Muy buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Eliberto Contreras, padre de familia de dos alumnos en este distrito. Mi mensajero de muchos padres de familia que no pudieron estar aquí con nosotros. Tenemos una gran preocupación por la educación futura de nuestros hijos y también por el recién empleo de la futura superintendente del distrito escolar. La pendiente demanda que la superintendente tiene del departamento escolar de la ciudad de Nueva York es una falta de respeto y es una falta de entendimiento hacia las personas de color. Nosotros tenemos un gran deseo de pertenecer, de trabajar y de contribuir en esa gran sociedad. Y ese liderazgo no es representativo de nuestros deseos. Nuestros estudiantes latinos poseen el porcentaje más bajo de graduación de esta escuela, New York Shell High School. Y aún somos la mayoría de estudiantes que estamos en esta escuela. No tenemos representación en ninguno de los niveles, en ninguno de los niveles este, representativos en esta ciudad. A nivel de gobernación local, en el departamento escolar, ni en el distrito escolar. Nuestros estudiantes ocupan liderazgo, líderes que se parezcan a ellos, que entiendan su cultura y que también los empujen a lograr su potencial. Es por ello que el nuevo superintendente no lo apoyamos. Gracias.